What up, what up, what up, what up? This is your boy, Noob1949. Guess what? On the way to a gig for a work event. It's an oyster roast. It'll be very interesting. Um, Life of a Rookie DJ, season two. This is the next episode. It's been a while, I know. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hello, Life of a Rookie DJ, Season 2. As you can see, it's a far different time of day than when I did the first little part that you just watched. You know why? Because I'm just finishing this gig. Four hours. I'm dead dog tired. Um, Learned a lot. I'll be talking about the video coming up next, but I just thought I'd let you know that I'm tired, whether you care or not. I always do these little videos after I do a gig, but man, that one wore me out. Wait till I tell you about this. Whew. What up? It's your boy, DJ Rob Will, Noob1949 on Xbox Live. I don't know why I keep intermixing my names. So... I've been slacking on my DJ videos. But anyway, this is the reflection video for the gig with no intel. This was probably one of the best learning experiences of my sh short-lived DJ career thus far. Um, it was very, it was kind of shaky from the beginning. I was negotiating with someone. Um, well, someone offered me the gig. Um, a close friend and I was like cool and they wanted to know prices um, and I gave them my prices you know they, they wanted a four-hour gig it was gonna be outside at this time of the year it was cold so I'm like four hours I don't know what type of DJs you guys are or how you price but I look at pricing and connection with what my time is worth because I do other things outside of DJing like I have two careers as well and I do a lot of blogging and things of that nature so when I take time away from another project to me personally that factors in people think that you know DJs just show up and we perform and we leave no you know if you want a four-hour gig I have to prep for that I have to put together playlists you don't have to but you'd be smart to put together playlists because you don't want to randomly sit up there and just pull music for four hours that will kill you so you know you prep you buy music, um, you gotta bring the equipment, set it up, break it down. You might wanna run a couple of practice sets. So just for those of you watching who, who've hired a DJ or thinking about hiring a DJ, that stuff goes into the pricing because we had a little, well we didn't have, really have an issue. My thing is this, my price is my price. I don't charge an astronomical amount, but I charge something that feels like it's worth my time. You know, I'm not going to do a DJ gig for four hours for $200. You got to be kidding me. No, because the only part that the client will actually probably see most of the time is when you get there and perform. They're not thinking about the preparation time leading up to the event. And that's a big, that's a huge factor for me personally. I would like to hear from some other DJs on that. I know other DJs charge far, far more than I do. Far more than I do um, but anyway had a little snafu with the price they compared with another company of course they came in cheaper they're like oh it's not wedding season we can do it for this price and I'm like well okay fine well do you want to adjust no I'm not gonna adjust my price if you want to go with the cheaper person that is totally fine people do that all the time and do competitive shopping I do competitive shopping that's fine but I know what my time is worth so you know, some people may think it's dumb to say, oh, well, you lower, you you don't make any money doing that. Yeah, I would, I could have possibly lost that on some money, but think about this. In the long run, let's say, I'm going to just throw a hypothetical number. Let's say I wanted to charge 600 and someone undercut me and said, oh, we'll do it for 300 or we'll do it for 250 whatever. And I say, you know what, I'll match them. Now, whenever I go back to that client, think about how hard it's going to be for me to raise my price with them. If I start you off with where I'm already comfortable or where we're comfortable or where I feel like it's worth my time, then when I work for you, I'm going to go into it knowing 
I'm, it's worth my while. So it's always it, it's it's gonna be a little harder. It's gonna be it's it's easier to move down than it is to move up in price. Cause I work for you for two three years and you're used to three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, and then all of a sudden I come with seven. You can be like, hey, what's going on? You know, you you worked a deal. Nope, I put my foot down. So I put my foot down. Hold up a second. I'm sorry. Had I wanted to see what I actually charged for that event. It was a good payday. Um. Anyway. So this was an official event, and I was put in as a vendor. Meaning, when they do events, they're gonna pull my information and call me. So it's gonna be a reoccurring thing. So did I take a big risk by sticking with my price and not matching? I did, but guess what, it paid off. So now when they pull me up, they see what I got paid the first time, so they know they are gonna have to pay me that. Um, Here's another huge lesson I learned. Gain as much intel as you can on the event. That might be common sense for a lot of you other DJs. Um, and when I, but as a rookie DJ, I didn't think about it. So typically, the only thing I normally ask is how many people are going to be there, inside or outside, and what type of music do you want? Very basic, right? That's gotten me through most of my events because I've just either been family or a school event, so I already know what I can and can't play and what I should and shouldn't play. This was different. It was an, it was a work event. Not my, not my job, someone else's. And it was an oyster roast. So I'm thinking, I don't know if you guys have ever seen an oyster roast. Google it. Basically with an oyster roast, people line up huge tables. They have holes cut in the table and they have trash cans underneath. And people steam or boil or however they cook oysters. And they dump them on the table. Just like a pile of food on the table. They just pile it up, right? And then everyone stands up and they just eat. It's really about eating. Like the music, I was more there for the ambiance rather than actually to get people to dance though a couple few people did dance but it was really about food i mean they had a chili cook off um i had pizza it was a, it was all about the food it was really like me just being the ambiance so i neglected well i didn't neglect i i reached out to try to find out more about the event and the only person i had was the person who offered it to me in the first place and they're like oh you know it'll be about 100 maybe 150 people you know, some older, some younger. I didn't get the details I needed. So, it was tough because I'm like, okay, are these people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, mixed crowd? I knew nothing. But this is something I said in an older video. Guys, diversify your music. Just because you don't listen to it every day or just because you don't like it, it's good to have it in the stash. I mean, I got country, I got rock, I got... 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s hits. You can download compilations or just buy compilations. Or ask. Talk to some older people that you know in your life. Hey, who'd you listen to growing up? Who's popular? What was their best song? Do that. Because in preparation for this event, I was kind of basically going in blind. And you don't want to do that for four hours. You don't. So thankfully, I had a clean playlist. Um, I'm a hip-hop and R&B guy. I didn't play hip hop. I play R and B most of the time, just to so people could vibe and eat. Um, and they did that. Then, uh, do, 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 do. someone walked by, and one of the, I guess, hosts, and she was like, "You know, it's okay if you change it up a little bit." Now, at first, you know how we are as DJs. Some of us, we. Tell me what to do. I know what I'm doing. The DJ, you know, I didn't take that attitude um, because I already know that typically when someone comes up to you and I wouldn't say it was a complaint, but it makes a suggestion or something of that nature, um, they don't know. They don't. They don't know what goes into running a set. I mean, I'm still learning myself, but they don't know as much as I know. And here's the thing, lady. This is a four-hour event. I've already been playing, at that point, I'd already been playing for like an hour and a half, maybe an hour 45. So I didn't want to burn through my really, really good stuff too early because this is a four hour event. So I was playing some decent stuff, but I had some really, really good stuff and everyone hadn't really shown up yet, but you booked me for four hours. So <clears throat> I'm not the type of guy that wants to replay the same songs over and over. So she said that 
And I took note. I started looking around. I was like, you know, immediately I could have just, oh, my God. Oh, she's right. Don't do that. Stick to your guns. You know how to run your set. But be real with yourself. You know, had I looked around and be like, you know what? I've been playing this too long. People are kind of staring. It's filling up now. Let me switch over. Then I would have switched over to some better songs and more, you know, the main part of my setup. But it wasn't that time yet. And I knew that she didn't understand that. So I didn't I didn't pay any mind. But I did look at the time and I was like, all right, you know, probably an hour or two. From hour two to about hour three and a half, I really need to hit it. Because that's going to be kind of like my peak time. Everyone to pretty much be here and enjoy it. So about 20 minutes later, I hit my main set. After looking at the people and who was nodding their head and things like that, everyone was a bit older. Um, they were mostly white people. Um... So I was like, okay, and I'm in the South. So I played some of the 80s, some of the 80s rock, a little bit of country, a little bit of um, R&B and stuff like that, and they were loving it. Um, I just had to feel the crowd out right then and there because I didn't know what to expect. And once I did that, everything pretty much went smooth for the rest of the night. Um... The part that sucks about an event like that, though, is the f I love oysters and chili and all that stuff. And I, I was there to work, man. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. And it was cold. Yo, it had to be like 50. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I couldn't feel my fingers by the end of the gig. But it was all good, though. I did it for the experience. And to get paid. And, you know, that money went towards new equipment, which will be unveiled in the next season. Oh, sorry. Facebook notification. Um, yeah, so it was a good gig. I learned a lot, a whole lot. Get as much information about the gig as you can. Who's going to be there? What kind of music to expect? One thing I'm going to start doing for my events, um, like parties and things like that, is set up. And you don't have to do this, but this is helpful. I want to set up a Google Doc. My friend did this for her wedding, whose wedding I DJed last year. She set up a Google Doc and sent it to everyone that was invited and let them send in songs that they wanted to hear. And then she sent it to me so I could get the song. So when people requested their song, I knew for sure that I had it. So um, I just wanted to drop that little tidbit on you. I mean, I didn't, I was, shout out to DJ Chuck Antonio. He came out there. Um, hold on real quick. Sorry, that's DJ Chuck Antonio. Um... Chuck came out, man. Shout, huge shout out to Chuck. Um, Cause I was nervous. I had never done a gig that long before. I met Chuck at a guitar center. They had a little DJ class, sort of. And he was there. We exchanged numbers. I exchanged numbers with a lot of people there, but he was the only one that hit me back. Always link up <clears throat> with the other DJs in your area. He and I are gonna do work together. Um, but he came out to support the event. I paid his way in. You know what I mean? I, I broke him off a little bit of the pay. Gave him some gas money or whatever. Um, and he was just there for moral support. I was jealous, though, because all he did was eat. And he would come check on me every once in a while and say, hey, you're doing a good job. This, that, and the third. But it was good to have that support from someone who understood what I was doing. Um, and that person telling me I messed up versus doing good and all that meant a lot more because they know how it should be going. So if you don't have a buddy DJ, wherever you are, try to find a buddy DJ, a friend, even someone you don't know. Hang out with the person, learn from each other, have each other's back. Because he, he even told me, hey, if you want me to play half of the gig, I'll do it for you. This, that, and the third. And that's always good to have, too, because like in my contract, if I get sick or something, I don't want your event to be ruined because I'm not there. So I will have someone to refer out to you um, or to replace me. So thank you, Chuck. If you're watching this anyway um that's about it man um thank you guys for watching the next episode will be the season finale this season a little shorter than the last season um but been going through some life changes again and i really don't have as much content this time around but i do feel like season two was a lot more about gigging and me getting experience but the next video you'll love but um Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Hit that like button right there, right there. Hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time on Life of a Ricky DJ. This is season two. Get that intel, man.